So we're here at the OPC Summit. So uh, who are you? I'm Tara Shaw. I'm a fourth year biomedical engineering student from the Illinois Institute of Technology. So the, it's in Chicago? Yes. In it's Chicago. like the Chicago MIT? I guess, yeah, you could say that. Yeah? So what is this project you're doing right now? So right now we are working on providing the solar infrastructure, the energy infrastructure in Haiti for primary schools that got the donation of the One Laptop for Child Expo laptop. Um, we are, in addition to working on the actual infrastructure, which is going to be DC solar only, um, we're also devising educational components to teach the students about solar energy, how it works, its benefits, so they understand the technology that we're bringing into the classroom. In addition to that, we are working on designing a um, sustainable, cost-effective EXO charging dock. Uh, the last school that we deployed in, in August um, did a charge about 400 laptops at one time, and we made a very rudimentary structure down there, but this semester we have prototyped a more cost-effective EXO dock that costs less than a dollar right now, which is over there. Let's, let's check it out. Sure. So, less than a dollar? Yep, this is less than a dollar and it charges uh, 20 laptops at one time. Where does the power go? So, well, that's what we're working on right now. This is a mock-up. The wires will run through the PVC pipe. And uh, so, because Haiti got 10,000 or 11,000 11, EXOs, are they being used? Well, one of the issues with using the laptops in Haiti is the fact that they don't have energy to actually charge the laptops. There's no grid? There's no grid power. Um, in 2010, January 2010, Haiti experienced a devastating earthquake that pretty much knocked off a lot of the grid power in remote areas and also major cities as well. The city that we're implementing in now left Kobus before the earthquake, so in um, 2009, which is when Haiti got the laptops, they did have grid power, but after the earthquake, they didn't. So the issue was um, they only had the laptops for maybe about two months and they were able to use them for two months before the electricity was gone, which is why we're putting in sustainable solar energy so that they're able to have constant, constant electricity. Can you show some pictures of sure. the setup? So this August, we implemented our solution in a um, primary school in Las Caubas, Haiti, called the EFACAP School, doing DC only. These are the students and some members of Haiti Outreach putting the panels up on the roof of the school that we're working in. This is the finished um, panel on the roof. Additionally, we're working on a wiring harness. So this is one of the, the Cook's girls, and um, that's me working together to screw junction boxes onto a table and wired it all together so that the laptops have a way of being charged. This is one of the first charges of the laptop. It was done um, on a Wednesday night. As you can see, the electronics go here, the wires run the wires run through this wall and into this junction box, which goes out to wires that we can stack the laptops up as 10. Each table will house 100 laptops, and we have four tables like that across the room, so we can charge 400 laptops at the same time. Here's us um, stacking up the laptops, measuring out which everyone is going to, which, where the laptops are going to go once we wire everything. This is our um, faculty advisor, Dr. Hoffman. Um, in addition to that, we actually found out that the children knew how to use the laptops way better than we did. So while they are using the laptops minimally, they get a lot of their power from buying it off of the street, which means that their laptop is on the street for a couple hours and it's not very safe to be out there without their supervision. But um, we were able to get everything done so they were able to uh, charge their laptops and show us some games they had on there. So we also deployed our educational content. We had a student who um, was from Haiti as part of the project and she devised these great educational content that she was able to administer in the classroom. She went to each individual classroom and talked about the benefits of solar energy and how our system works as well, and the students were able to make these little drawings of what, how they saw solar energy to be. So you can see they drew the panels on the roof coming down to electrical components and the batteries and the laptops. So, so how much does it cost to wire a whole school with the... Uh... Including travel, the, um, the solution was about $20,000. When we fundraise everything completely on our own. So how much is that per laptop? Per laptop, we, without travel, Travel is about 300 with laptop, it's about $500 for laptop. But that includes charging it, 
for 20 years since our lifespan is 20 years. 20 years of laptop use in the whole school. 20 years of the solar panel energy being provided. Solar panels have a warranty. So, the laptop use is, I guess, dependent on the lifespan of the laptop. So where do you find the funds for this project? We fundraise completely on our own. So we had done grant writing. We won a grant of $4,000 from the Millennium Campus Network. We won an IEEE grant of $17,000 an Internet Society grant for $10,000. We're also partnering with NVIDIA who brought electricity to, or internet to the school that we've been working in. So how many laptops were that? 400 involved in this project? 400 laptops. So how about the 10,600 other laptops? So another part of our project is not just doing one implementation. Eventually we want this project to turn over to partners in Haiti, in country partners. Right now we're working with the Ministry of Education in hopes that they're going to be able to take our solution and deploy it. We're making our solution as simple as possible. What happened was, and when that was put to the test on this implementation, all semester we had been designing for one school, ended up a week before we had to switch everything and deploy at another school. But our solution was simple enough that we would be stuck to the same plans and were able to implement it. So it's easy to scale the solution across the country. And is it not too hard to learn how to set it up? It's really not. Um, we're working on how to solar documents. We're working on two main ones. One, the benefits and the uses of solar energy for the adults, that sort of curriculum, and also how to calculate, install, do a site assessment, and all that sort of nitty-gritty detail of solar energy. And it's really not that difficult. Is it dangerous? There's a lot of power going through cables sometimes? <laughs> not really. Um, I mean, the laptops have a pretty low voltage, so it's not that dangerous to be around. There are a couple parts where you have to be careful, but for the most part, it was not that dangerous. This has to happen in the next few years. There's a big part of the world, they need to have this. Yep, exactly. Especially for Haiti, they need to have the electricity in order to be able to use the laptops and have the technology be an impact on their lives. And it's not just for the laptops, it's good for the school to have electricity. Absolutely. We have um, some light in the in the charging station and also it's just good for the school to have electricity in general.